So today we're checking out some lightsabers to 3D print. We're checking them out on Thingverse, MakerBot's Thingverse, which is a pretty cool site if you've never seen it. But basically, we're gonna resin 3D print a lightsaber and see how it goes. So we decided to do the Luke Skywalker lightsaber. Why not? Luke was sort of who we first experienced as a Jedi, um, you know, in the first Star Wars. I know it wasn't the first order wise, but yeah, it's, that's who we're going with. OK, so what we decided to use is this model that was off Thingiverse. Um, it's by Infiniati. And basically why we decided to do this, even though this print is from 2014, we decided to use it because it's actually a pretty good design um, for uh, small printers. As we see here, all the pieces are in smaller components. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to download all these components. We're basically going to bring them into Shuto Box, which is what we use because we're printing on an Elegoo Mars 3, which is a relatively small printer. We're going to um, show you how we set that up and basically go from there. So we are in Shuto Box. Now we're going to basically take our models and add them in. We're going to just take the first component, right? Because we want to see what that actually looks like. Now this is the first component. We see it on our uh, on our plate, right? Which we see it's a decent size, but we look like we have a little more room. So we're going to add another component in, which will be our second component. And we're just going to drop that in. And now we have our two components here. Now, I'm just going to separate them a little bit. Let's move this one this way. Hold on. We're just going to unselect all for a second. And let's move component two. We're going to move it over here. We are going to angle these. Um, if we looked at the bottom of this, we could see what would actually be touching the plate. So we do see that they're pretty flat against the plate, but the green shows you where it actually is going to touch the plate. We're going to angle our print a little bit. So let's just move this back. Let's go home. And basically what we're going to do is we're just going to rotate this a little bit. So we're going to rotate the axis. Oh, let me grab both of them. We're going to rotate the axis on them to tilt them a little. Okay. And we're just going to look around, make sure the prints are completely on the plate. We may move this second one a little bit further. So let's just move one at a time. So let's move this one out a little bit and then we're going to move this one a little bit closer okay so we want to make sure there's some distance i like having distance between my components and we're going to look around it looks like everything is good we're looking underneath it and we're seeing it is away from the plate okay now what we're going to do is we're going to add our supports which is pretty straightforward um we're going to go into the supports over here and basically we have it set for medium supports okay uh, Let's go back. We need to select both of our models. Okay. So now we have it set for medium support. So what we're going to do is we're just going to hit, you know, uh, platform and it's going to add our platform and our supports for both of the models. If we just had one selected, it would only do the, the one model itself. So if we felt we needed to add other plat other um, pieces in, we could just go here and just click on where we wanted to add them. If we feel like we need more support as these are angled, right? We may want to put some more supports in here and you can put supports pretty much anywhere you want on your model by just clicking and adding them to the model itself. Okay. So anywhere you feel you need supports, I mean, the software does it automatically, but sometimes you feel like, okay, I need a little bit extra and I want to add the supports. Now what's really cool is if you flip it over let me just go back a little bit. Um, so you could see where it's red, where it's tinted red over here is where the software actually thinks it needs supports. So it's basically showing you in these red pieces, this is where it's going to need supports in order to print it. So basically what we're going to do is we added some supports in, we're going to slice this, which is pretty straightforward. We go over here, we're going to, and what's really cool, actually, when you hover over slice, do you see how it's, let me just zoom out a little bit. Do you see how it's showing? This is your entire build volume. So we could have added other components up in here, 
um, you know, above these to print more components at one time. But we are going to do these, just print these two. One thing to note is we didn't hollow out these components. The reason why we didn't hollow out the components is we want this to be a pretty hefty lightsaber. So we're actually going to keep these as solid pieces, which means it's probably going to take a little bit longer to print. And then we just hit slice, and it's going to start slicing our files for us. And we're just going to save this. And now we're ready to print. Getting ready to print the first two components of this lightsaber build. We're printing it on the Elegoo Mars 3, which is a relatively small resin 3D printer. Um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna fill up the vat with our gray resin. We're actually using a uh, water washable resin. So we're gonna actually use that to print this. Like I said, we're printing it solid uh, as a solid piece. We didn't hollow out the model. We're just gonna fill our vat to its max because we are printing pretty solid pieces. Close that up. We are going to insert our thumb drive, find our print. Basically, it's really simple. You hit print. You find the print you want. Now we see this is the, the print we're actually going. This is the first print. So we're gonna hit this. We're gonna, ins we're gonna put the shroud over this and we're gonna hit print. And in a few seconds, it's gonna tell us how long the print is gonna take. So it looks like it's gonna take about three hours to print these two components for the lightsaber. Like I said, we could have probably stacked a few more on, but we wanna see how the print goes. Um, we'll check back uh, systematically to see how the print is going. So we're a little over 15% on our build. We're actually gonna pause it for a second and see if the print is actually adhering to the plate itself. So we're just gonna take a look under the plate, make sure everything's adhering, um, you know, so that way we can continue our build. And we usually do this, we usually check in real quick. So we're just looking underneath the plate and we do see that there are supports uh, going. So uh, we're, we look like we're actually, uh, we're starting to even print the model. So we're gonna just play again and resume the build. And as we can see here, our two pieces finished. Our vat's still pretty full because we added uh, more resin into it. And we're gonna take these off and take a look at them. Washed our first couple of components, let them air dry. Now we're gonna actually cure them for a little bit. So we're gonna put them on our curing station. Okay, we're gonna throw the lid on this and we're gonna set it to cure. So we're gonna cure these guys for about four minutes. Our other prints are printing over there on the Mars. And they have another, looks like four hours um, to finish printing. You know, these are gonna be cured in a few minutes. We'll cure them, we'll get them uh, cleaned up a little bit and we'll be ready to uh, start printing everything together once this prints and once one more section prints. But the next section should be relatively short um, as it's smaller components. Okay, the second part is done. So let's remove the shroud and we see the second parts of the hilt. So we're just gonna scrape off the extra resin that always has a tendency to sit up here. Make as much as we can into the vat. But what you do is when you remove your prints from the plate, what you want to try to do is get just the corner underneath one of the edges of the support. And once it's under one edge, because you don't want to gouge your plate, you just want to sort of push, 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 and then just sort of hear it. Okay, first piece came off. Now we're gonna, we lost some of the supports, but that's okay, we don't really need them at this point. And we're gonna do the same thing with this. Until our print pops off. Now, 
we do need to remove any of the extra resin off this plate. But first what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these in the wash. So we're just gonna put our pieces in our little fryer looking basket, throw them in. And these are pretty hefty pieces. Like I said, we printed the, uh, the parts of the hill as solid because we want it to be as um, sturdy as possible. So we're gonna turn this to wash. We're gonna put it on for about four minutes. And while that's washing, we're gonna actually uh, take care of this, clean this up, and then we're gonna start our next print. In the meantime, we start our next print, which has two hours and 35 minutes. So we finished 3D printing all the parts for our lightsaber. These two pieces alone took about three hours. Then we printed these two together. They actually took about five, but we see the height on this. Then we printed the other components, which only took a couple of hours. Now, this one component is the only one that sort of failed a little bit. If we see here near the edge, um, the print actually failed a little bit on this little rim right here. But we're gonna use it, I mean, mainly because it's, it's very minor. It's also a lightsaber. It's meant to look a little worn and, you know, beat up. So we're gonna actually try using this print. If we need to print another one, we're going to do it. But what's really cool about this model is they just sort of friction fit. So these actually just go together and they push in. Now, they are a little tight. I don't know if this model was originally designed for resin printers um, versus other type of 3D printers. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of some sandpaper or our sanding brush, go in here, take a little bit off, or maybe even grab our Dremel, take a little bit off, make it so it's snug, but it will still friction fit. And then probably we're gonna actually glue it together and actually uh, put the lightsaber completely together. So we're gonna take some sandpaper and actually sand this down and friction fit everything. Um, there are a couple of spots on here where we do see like, for instance here, we see some support marks. You know, I did sand this a little bit. We're gonna sand it down a little more so that way when we prime, it's gonna be very smooth. <laughs> We got everything put together. We sanded everything down lightly to make sure any support, little dots from the supports were removed. Um, we actually uh, sanded a little bit down. It was a little snug, so we had to sand, take our Dremel and sand a little bit down in the holes to make it fit. This is supposed to be friction fit. There was a couple we probably made a little too loose, but we did use a little bit of hot glue also to make sure it stays pretty snug. Um, we're basically gonna prime this thing, but before we do, make sure you hit subscribe and we'll show you the finished result. We're primed and ready for paint. <laughs>